Some new approval numbers are out for all party leaders from the Angus Reid Institute as we head into the new year. We're going to start with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau as 43% of more than 5,000 respondents approved of him, a five-point increase since the summer, while 54% disapproved. Now only 33% had favorable views of Pierre Polyev, while 47% had favorable views each of NDP leader Jagmeet Singh and Bloc leader Yves-Francois Blanchet. So what should we read into these numbers? It's time for the power panel. Political strategist Sharon Carr is in Toronto, as is Council of Public Affairs Brad Levine. And here in studio with me, Summa Strategies Tim Powers and former CBC Parliamentary Bureau Chief Rob Russo. Hello, gang. Here we are. I, I feel like a pair of Scarborough saddle shoes in between a couple of St. John's tuxedos. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, and listen, the tuxedos might walk all over you, so you better jump in. Okay. All right, because I'm going to start with Sharon, just to get it away from these two guys. Sharon, what, 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 should, what should we take away for, from all of these numbers? Well, I'll preface this by saying I'm, I, I know we all like to look at polls and see where they kind of lean to know what public opinion is, but I'd like to remind our viewers that the only poll that really matters is the one on election day. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I will say that what was surprising from this poll was how poorly uh, Mr. Polyev has done or how poorly he has polled, which I'm not too surprised about because we knew his campaign strategy for his leadership campaign was to pander to his base and his base solely. We've yet to see how he will perform in a general election type of setting and we also saw that they didn't really try in the by-election that happened in Mississauga Lakeshore. So I, my biggest takeaway is that Pierre Polyev has, is not doing super great in this poll and I don't think that um, it should be a shock to anybody. Okay, I, I think we got a graphic, right? A control room. I'm sorry if I'm throwing a curveball at you. That that shows uh, Polyev's favor, uh, favorability, his approval or disapproval. We can just pop that up. And this is how he compares to other conservative leaders uh, after three months in. And if you look at that there, he has got a net negativity rate rate of 21%, right? Like uh, he is a 33% approval, 54% disapproval, but he's lower than Aaron O'Toole was, pretty much even with, with uh, Andrew Scheer and way back from where Stephen Harper was three oh, months boy. in as conservative leader. So uh, Brad, pick up on that. I, I mean, what do you make of that? Seems how Sharon sort of started the conversation there. What do you make of that? Yeah. those numbers? Concerning, if I was uh, in uh, Pierre Polyev's office, uh, because you would hope that that after three months of being the conservative leader, you'd have a bit of a bounce. When you take a look at the political landscape right now, there's plenty for the opposition uh, leaders, especially the, the, the largest uh, official opposition leader, Polyev, to go after uh, the government on. There's, there's, we've got, obviously, runaway inflation, which is a number one issue uh, in this survey. Uh, Health care crisis going on right now. There's lots for the opposition uh, leader to go after Trudeau on. And yet still, uh, he can't make a breakthrough. If he wants to expand the base from the last election, he's got a, he's got a num number of different audiences he needs to get those net approval ratings up on. One is women, which, he, which according to this survey, uh, he is polling very poorly with. And the other one is Quebec, where the intensity of the disapproval uh, is my takeaway and how much. It's not just a lot of wait and see. It's people have made up their mind. There's, there isn't a lot of unsure uh, in this survey on Polyev, but the intensity of the disapproval uh, is my takeaway from this survey. All right, I'm going to bring it back to St. John's and Scarborough here now for their, their input on this. Uh, but, but Tim, on that point, like there is a big gender gap, you know, uh, much lower for Polyev uh, with women. And, and that 64%, I think, is the, is the disapproval rate in Quebec. And that's a place where they need to break through. Yeah, a few things. I agree with Sharon that this isn't super surprising. I don't think you've seen yet from Polyev the uh, attempt to broaden his appeal. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, and by that I mean probably since uh, Stephen Harper, Conservatives have struggled uh, as they begin. Uh, new conservative leaders have struggled with uh, different cohorts of female voters. So again, that is not surprising. But it, I'm not dismissing that. That's something yep. you need it's to pay. You, you need to pay attention to. Um, I, I, I think if you're Pierre's team, you look at this. You look at the trends. Rob alluded to them earlier. The uh, po um, in most polls that I have seen, including our abacus stuff, Pierre has higher negatives than he does positives. So does the prime minister, uh, yeah, for that yeah, matter, exactly. at the moment. Um, so how do you concoct a formula and formulas going forward? I found it very interesting this weekend. First time I've actually seen Pierre or heard Pierre Polly have talk about broader strategy. You remember Stephen Harper, Rob will well remember this, said you never talk about strategy. But they were talking this weekend about outreach. Yeah. And they were yes. talking about uh, ethnic outreach in line with what outreach, Jason yeah. Kenney did. 
That doesn't necessarily change some of these numbers here, but we're hearing more. They're sending signals that they want to connect with other people. The last thing I'd say in response to one of Brad's points, if you look at the horse race numbers, which are ultimately the ones they're they're ineffectual to a large degree, but they're helpful in, in getting a, uh, a scene set. I mean, the conservatives and the liberals are either tied or, or, or within the margin of error of being tied. So again, if you're the opposition leader, part of your game is to make uh, watch the other side unravel, if that is your hope, though you have to be more strategic and wise than that, you're not in a bad place. But clearly there's a lot of work to be done. Rob, I'm a little bit surprised that the Prime Minister's numbers are as high as they are at 42%. I know he's got a 54% disapproval, but we've seen that higher, and he's actually up five points uh, from the summer. I mean, what's your big takeaway of the, the big picture numbers here? Uh, you know what? I, I don't see a lot of good news for anybody. Yes, it's true the Prime Minister bounced back at yeah. the end of the year after after um, a pretty sloppy first six, seven months of the year. Yeah. He, he has come back. But when I look at these numbers, I see a lot of mutual assured destruction. There's not a lot of encouraging signs well, there he for does anybody. look like Gorbachev. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, uh, look, the, the, the prime minister, other polls show that when you ask, I think one of the central questions that, that people vote on, country going in the right direction, wrong direction, still more people think it's going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. There's a recession looming. Yep. Uh, that's bad news for any incumbent government. Um, in terms of Mr. Poilievre, the, the, no, the news is not good. Conservatives themselves say that he has a very low ceiling. He, he can't seem to go beyond a certain point, a very high base, but yeah. a low ceiling. I do think there have been some subtle changes in his message to try and get at that. Lately, you hear him talk more and more about the fact that he's the child of an unwed mother. Uh, and, um, and, the, and, and the son of a gay father. He is trying to yeah. uh, appeal to people who normally would not be interested in what he was peddling before. So I think you'll see him early in the year begin to reintroduce himself uh, to people, and he still has time to do that. A lot, we know him very well, but a lot of people outside of Ottawa and a lot of people who don't follow politics close don't know him that well, and he needs to reintroduce him to, uh, himself to people particularly, as Brad said, women and older mm -hmm. voters who are um, uh, perturbed, repelled by what they see sometimes mm -hmm. as polarizing figures. Uh, and those are the people that turn up to vote, not younger people, but yep. people my age, between 45 and 65. Those are the people who turn up to vote. Well, that's actually everybody's age, I think, sitting here in the studio. Sharon, uh, I, I'm not going to try to put you into any kind of a category. <laughs> <Not> uh, but <laughs> but I, I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on, on, on where the Liberals are right now with Justin Trudeau. I mean, a five-point bump uh, since the summer. I don't know if that's the public inquiry that did that, if it's the fiscal update that did that. But there is an increase for Justin Trudeau, and what's been a pretty tough year. I think, well, your competition matters, right? And I think there's a whole variety of different pieces that are going to get people's eyes rolling or tuning in a different direction. And I think that the competition here matters. And I think Canadians specifically who did this poll have seen the difference in the contrast between Prime Minister Trudeau and Pierre Polyev. And a lot of people, however they feel about Prime Minister Trudeau, probably just don't want to deal with what a potential Prime Minister Polyev could look like. So there is a factor of that. But I also do think that the inquiry into the Emergencies Act did play a role into it. I think we saw what a disaster that entire inquiry was, specifically from the, I would say, convoy's perspective, and knowing someone like Pierre Polyev and, his, and a good chunk of his caucus who was out there supporting the convoy, I think it made a lot of people kind of lose a bit of trust in Mr. Polyev and the Conservative Party and what they stand for by seeing a bunch of hooligans who were like roasting hot dogs outside of Wellington being greeted by someone like Michael Cooper and all these other individuals. So I think competition does matter. I wouldn't read too much into this poll just yet because people can be very fickle and something mm -hmm. can change at any given time. So I would say wait till 2023 when we start to see a new year, uh, a budget coming in the spring, and I think people's eyes and ears will be shifted in different directions. But Brad, let's talk about that new year, right? Because uh, every, it, whether it's a recession or not, it's not going to be a uh, steak and lobster type of economic year uh, for, for most people. It's going to be pretty mm -hmm. tough. There's this lingering crisis in the healthcare system that the politicians seem incapable of getting together to address in any kind of a meaningful way. I mean, how do you think all of these things sort of set the table for a changing political dynamic looking ahead? Well, it, it certainly does give the federal government, uh, the federal liberals, uh, some, some sense as to what you know, needs to be the main uh, matters uh, in the budget coming uh, early in the year, uh, March, April. Cost of living and inflation, number one issue. 
uh, and health care crisis, number two issue. And then what is, what is fascinating about, about the survey, when, 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 it, when it's asking the respondents to talk about issues that matter, the classic conservative issues, that is lowering the deficit, uh, lowering taxes, those are all in the, in the low to mid-teens in terms of uh, number one issues on people's minds. But, you know, cost of living, 61%, uh, health care, uh, close second. It's, it's going to be a challenge for uh, Polyev to, uh, to get those issues on which are traditional conservative uh, issues uh, front and center. It provides Trudeau uh, and, and, to, and to, to a lesser extent Singh, who's been out there on things like cost of living and out there on, on the health care crisis, uh, an opportunity to, to, to uh, uh, run with their communication strategy early uh, in the new year and it gives the federal government a huge opportunity in the, in, the, in the budget. If Trudeau can take a leadership role, as we've been saying on this panel for many weeks, to take a leadership role with the premiers and the provincial uh, officials on the matter of health care, um, it can only serve uh, Trudeau's popularity and approval ratings uh, well uh, in the early months of 2023. Tim, what do you think of that? I mean, there's a lot of challenges there, but is there opportunity there for, for the Liberals to capitalize on, on these big front-of-mind challenges? Uh, if they can get them... I mean, the, the challenge the Liberals had prior to, I think, the inquiry, and I think Sharon's pointed that as maybe one of the signs of a little bit of a recovery for them, was they weren't communicating in an effective way with the public. They had a real hard time. Krisha Freeland, for his bright as she is, does not do empathy well. Justin Trudeau, who used to have mojo in that front, was struggling. You know, back to Polyev for a moment. I don't think we should entirely discount some of the success he did have in that leadership campaign of motivating younger people in particular, who've been the bread and butter of the NDP and the Liberals, to come to his rallies. He did have, and it astounded me, 4,000, 5,000 people yep. rallies. And in large measure, they weren't just the, the hot dog vendors and the, the Whirlpool boys from the con Envoy here. They were young people who were coming out who had economic issues and had concerns. Polyev seemed to be effective at doing that. So he has to hope that the liberals struggle communicating empathy and humanity around people's challenges and that he can cut in there. He's going to have to enhance his envelope of offerings. He's going to have to move away, move further down the road and explain what economic freedom is and what a gatekeeper yes. really is. But he did have a moment. He did have a moment over the summer where he was able to connect with people that should not be discounted and the, and the liberals I don't think have rectified how they yeah. communicate with people yet. Rob quick thoughts then we got to take a break. Well uh, young people haven't voted in big numbers since 2015 when legalizing Correct. weed was on was on the ballot they've gone down so he's gonna have to go beyond that the struggle for the Prime Minister is over the last four or five years a lot of houses have been sold in Canada a lot of those mortgages are coming yep. due a yep. lot of people are gonna lose their jobs over the next six months of the year it's going to be a tough time to be an incumbent government over the next six months. Yeah, and those young voters aren't so young anymore, seven, eight years later, nine, mm -hmm. maybe even ten years by the time we get to the next election. Yeah. All right, stay tuned. More Power and Politics coming up right after this break.